Welcome everyone to the Highway Vineyard Church Christmas candlelight service like we've never ever done it before. This is truly a re first, a remarkable occurrence. We are doing it from our own living rooms or maybe some bedrooms, I don't know. But the whole idea is, is that we get to celebrate Christmas together using readings and carols now one of my favorite times of the year is christmas eve and i love listening to the nine lessons and carols well we haven't got nine lessons we've got six and we're going to tell the christmas story through those readings and we're going to celebrate by singing the christmas carols that have been written well over the years and um i just i was thinking about Heart the Herald Angels the other day, written by Charles Wesley. He, that was a couple of centuries ago, he wrote that. Amazing. Uh, and we are singing it, is it, well, I just thinking about the history of people continuing singing these songs. Amazing, to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So we're gonna have some carols, we're gonna have some readings. I'm gonna be the compare as it were, for the evening and um, I'm going to also do a little talk a little bit later on. So I'm going to first though pray and um, just ask the Holy Spirit to help us and um, if you're the first time with us tonight you are so welcome, it's so good to have you with us and um, just relax obviously you, you should be because you're in your own home but relax, join in with the carols, hopefully you will have received um, by the, the email, the, the carol sheet, which we will keep, be keeping to. Otherwise, I'm sure you're very familiar with some of the carol words anyway. Just um, do your best. Wonderful. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity tonight to meet together via Zoom. We thank you for the technology. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are with us wherever we are gathering. We pray, Spirit of God, will you help us tonight to focus our attention upon the meaning of Christmas. Please come. Be with us, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Help us to celebrate, to join in together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Now, Olu and Lisha and um, the Bollins clan are going to be leading us in our carols. Um, the first carol is O Little Town of Bethlehem. Do not be afraid. You are going to be muted so you can sing as loud as you like. You will not be heard by anybody else apart from, well, we're only going to hear Olu, Leisha and the Bollins clan because they're all in the same house. Is that okay? Thumbs up. Good. Let's go. Where 
Thank you so much. Well done. Well sung, everybody. We are going to have our first reading, and Yvonne is going to read from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 and 9, 1 to 7. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Nethpali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the, Mount of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shack shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire, for to us the child is born, to us the son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Let's sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful. Over to you, Olo. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us. 
Well done. Fantastic. Thank you. Our second reading is read, going to be read by Chisomo, Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Um, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not, did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Chisoma. Now we're going to sing one of my favourite carols in the bleak midwinter. Um, it's not snowing outside or anything like that, but I, I just love this, this, this carol, especially the last verse. Let's sing it together.
Excellent. Now we're going to have Michael is going to bring our third reading, which is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Michael. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Thanks be to God. Thank you. We're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Night. All is calm, all is bright. Now, I'm not sure actually if that is accurate when the birth actually happens, because I'm not sure those sort of things are quite so quiet. But the, the wonderful carol as we celebrate again, Jesus is coming. Silent night. going to hear about the shepherds from Tosin, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people, for all other people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was, lay, who was laying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up, treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that had, that, all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you, Tosin. I'm going to sing a, a carol that tells the story again. While shepherds watch their flocks by night. Jill will tell us about the arrival of the Magi. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. Matthew 2 1 to 11 from the NIV. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them 
till it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. <laughs> There's only one cow you can sing after that, and that is We Three Kings. <laughs> now the big the big reveal john chapter 1 verses 1 to 14 jess is going to read that for us in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. 
He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jess. Let's sing Hark the Herald Angels. Fantastic. May I say that you've all sounded absolutely incredible tonight. Um, I have been privy to what's been going on in your front rooms. Nobody else has been able to hear it, but I've been able to hear it. No, actually, no, that's still not true. But I'm glad you can't hear me because I tell you, I warbled at one point and it wasn't quite hitting the mark. Anyway, it's fantastic that we can sing these Christmas songs together, these Christmas carols. It, I'm, I'm going to show you my candles. There they are. Can you see those? Yeah. A little bit. Never mind. Um, so someone said Christmas is not cancelled. Indeed, Christmas just got more real. I don't know how you felt about yesterday's announcements about, well, us all being in tier four and not really being able to leave London. I don't know if anybody was planning to leave London anyway. But I guess the enormity of the restrictions, again, were biting home. What we're living through is extraordinary. It is amazing and not good. However, we have a message, the Christmas message, that is so full of hope. Because right there in Matthew chapter 1, we heard two things. We heard that Jesus was Emmanuel God with us, and we also heard that his name was to be Jesus. Why? Because 
he was coming to save us. Well, let's start with Jesus coming to save us. What's that mean? Well, someone once said it's just a bit, basically it's saying God to the rescue. That's what the word Jesus means, God to the rescue. Now, have you ever been rescued? I'm not sure if you, like me, have been um, watching the news, probably. There have been two good news stories, I think, over on the BBC recently. One was this week, and I'm going to share my screen with you to show where that is. Yes, say, who saw that? Did you see, can you see that? There was a rescue um, on um, in the Lake District. Four walkers went walking and the mist came down and they thought they were up one particular fell, but actually they weren't. They were up another and they were in a most precarious position. They could not, there was no path down. They were stuck and they needed rescuing. And the mountain rescue team came and got them out of that hole, out of that serious situation. It took them three and a half hours to do that. Now, I have to say that I once was rescued as well. Yes, now this is, um, I, I didn't quite get the mountain rescue team. Unfortunately, they were on an exercise at the time and couldn't help. They were most disappointed. What happened to me was that I was on uh, an environmental studies field trip when I was in year 10, roughly about then. And we went to the Peak District. And as we um, went one lunchtime in, during, during this field trip, um, we were allowed to roam up these, uh, this particular area. And I was following my friend, Patrick. And Patrick started climbing up a hill. And um, I, I, I kind of was following close after him. I wasn't really enjoying it. And it got a little bit more dangerous as we got a little bit higher. And there was, um, there was a cliff. And there was a, it was like, can you see my hand? It was like that. It was sheer. And then there was a cliff right down. And... I, I, I was following him, but I didn't want to look like a wuss, but I wasn't thinking, I was thinking, I don't want to do this, but I'm not going to be a coward. I'm not going to dip out of this. Anyway, he made it across this. He edged along and he made it across this, this ridge. But as I was going, I slipped. Now, there was absolutely nothing to... Um, hold on to. I was being propelled a bit like a ski jump down this ridge, down this. And there was a, just a cliff and a sheer drop. And I was, as I went down there, I thought, well, let's go in style. So I pushed myself off a little bit like Eddie the Eagle. And I'm sailing through the, the, the air. And you know, it's amazing what goes through your mind as you're sailing through the air. You're thinking, I thought to myself, there's stinging nettles there. I don't want to land in those. So I flapped a little bit and did what I could to try and keep going. And then I was beginning to think, well, please don't land on your face because that could be really messy. I didn't land on my, my face. Gravity did take over though. Now, if I'd been a parachutist or been a, a commando, I would have probably rolled. I didn't know that's what you're supposed to do in these situations. So gravity took its case and I came down crack and my ankle stopped going, my knee stopped going, but the rest of my body didn't. I concertinaed such that my chin touched my knees and I was knocked out. I needed rescuing. Now, thankfully, my friend Patrick, we'd all been given a, a, a whistle in, for well, somebody had the foresight. If we got into trouble, whistle. So he whistled, the teacher came, and they called the mountain rescue, but they were on an exercise. They were most disappointed. So they had to call an ambulance as well instead. So I was then taken off to Buxton Hospital, and I was sorted out. No permanent damage. Well, you might question that. But I did not have any breakages in my knees or my ankles or my chin 
I was, yeah, I, I survived. So I was rescued. What does it mean, God to the rescue? It is saying here, he rescues us from our sin. What is sin? Well, it's us saying, push off God, don't need you. It's us going our, our own way, not going God's way. That causes us to have a separation between us and God. Paul, the apostle said, now here is a trustworthy saying, Christ Jesus came to save sinners. He came as a baby, but he didn't stay as a baby. He grew to be a man, a man, a perfect man, who ultimately went to the cross and died on the cross to be the scapegoat to take upon himself your sin and my sin. He died in our place to bring us back to God. We know that's true because three days later, he rose again from the dead and he's alive now forevermore. Jesus, through his coming, through his death and his resurrection, rescues us from the mess we got ourselves into and enables us to have a relationship with God. I said there were two good news stories in the news recently. I'm gonna show you another one. I don't know if you saw this. Hold on, I'm gonna do this properly now. Hold on, I can do this, play, that's it. Go. Do you know who that is? That is Pastor Mick Fleming. Pastor Mick Fleming um, appeared on the news a couple of weeks ago with a guy, Father Alex Frost, and they shared what they were doing. They were in, in this town, Burnley, and they were feeding the hungry. There they were. They were um, handing out food parcels, as many churches had done. But this, this story, particular story, grabbed people's hearts. Why? Because, well, their compassion. Father Alex was in tears as he conveyed the need that they were serving in that place. Father, Father Mick, well, he has a story. And it's amazing that his story of how God rescued him is on the BBC News um, channel. Um, uh, it's just right there. It's written out for you how he moved from being a violent drug dealer to being somebody who is full of compassion. It's amazing how God turned this man's life around. God rescued him. And as he rescued him, he gave his life to serve Jesus. And he's doing that by coming alongside those in need in, <clears throat> in Burnley. And this picture here of Father Mick next to a guy on the floor shows me what I think is the most amazing message of Christmas. And that is of someone coming alongside. And, and that is what Emmanuel is. God rescues us. God comes to be with us. He comes alongside. He comes down to where we are. He comes and lives with us. That's what ultimately Jesus did. He showed us what the heart of God is like. He showed us what God is like in a body. Fully divine, fully man, shows us what God is like. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And I'm trying to stop my sharing now, and I can't do that. Help. Here we go. That's it. That's the message of Christmas. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. He comes alongside us. Now, I'm, I'm sure like 
me, you are distressed about the circumstances we're finding ourselves in. The message is this. The hope-filled message is this. God is with us. Whether you are disappointed about your plans being interrupted, not being able to see the people that you wanted to see, the truth remains the same because Jesus came. He is with us now. Whether you are mourning the loss of someone who died this year, whether there is an empty chair around your Christmas dinner this, this year, the reality is God is with us and he brings comfort to those who are suffering. Whether you are, your anxiety levels are going through the roof, you're fear-filled, you're worried about what's going to look like, contract, whether you are fearful of contracting the disease or somebody else you love contracting it, the reality is God is with us. He brings his peace. His peace he releases to you and to me. God is with us. So this story, this Christmas story, as we can see with Pastor Mick, it's all about lives being changed, transformed, the grace of God in action. Jesus, we heard, was full of grace and truth. He brings peace. He brings his salvation, his rescue to sinners like you and to me, that we might have that relationship with God, that we might know for eternity his presence is with us. God is with us. One of my um, favorite carols that we haven't sung tonight is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. I love that. I love listening to it. It's an Advent song, really, all about looking forward to the coming of Jesus. And I love the verses because each verse looks at a, a kind of a name char characteristic of Jesus. And I'm just going to finish my little talk now by just reading those verses and using that as a prayer for each one of us, that an aspect of Jesus's character, we might know him coming to us as Emmanuel and making it real in our lives. So shall we pray together as I read these words? O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. O come, O wisdom from on high, who ordered all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in its way to go. O come, O come, great Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the law in cloud and majesty and awe. O come, O branch of Jesse's stem, unto your own and rescue them. From depths of hell your people save and give them victory o the grave. O come, O key of David, come and open wide our heavenly throne. Make safe for us the heavenward road and bar the way to death's abode. O come, O bright and morning star, and bring us comfort from afar. Dispel the shadow of the night and turn our darkness into light. O come, O King of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid all our sad division cease and be yourself our King of peace. Rejoice. Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Rejoice, 
Emmanuel shall come to you. I pray that is true for you now in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our last carol, and that is Joy to the World. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let's just close in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much that you are Emmanuel, God with us. You came to rescue us. You came to put us right with God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you would be with us. You would come come to us, be born in us. Lord, come. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd walk with us through these difficult days. Help us to celebrate your birth this Christmas. Help us to make the most of this time. Help us to serve others. Help us to declare that you are Emmanuel. God with us. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen.